Okay. Come on, Sean. Okay, let's let's talk about um, focusing on Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great. Now, what this is that I'm going to explain is uh, I'm going to do it in just a couple. You know, basically, probably all together two hours. Um, I did this for our small group leaders in Kiev. It was a two. It's a it's a two day retreat. Um, with theory and then practic practicals, uh, how to actually do it. Um, I'm still trying to uh, package this. Um, it, don't feel uh, great pressure to write down everything. I, I'm happy to send you my notes and these slides. Um, if you promise to give me feedback and as, a, as you use certain things, if we can tweak it um, to make it uh, more effective. Um, but I feel like God's really blessed. Um, our staff is getting a hold of a lot of this, um, and it's helped a lot of our staff because when, you, when you're a couple leading 350 people, um, you can't do everything. Right. What? That's a way to say that. Whoa. Whoa. And, it's a hard teacher. you know, it's interesting because and we're going to talk about this, we'll look at this in the scriptures, but there's so much power and potential in every Christian. Never. And often, because of my leadership, I actually put a ceiling over what they believe they can do. And then they are dependent on me. And my best people in Kiev who don't work for the church, they are so called on by so many disciples to solve so many yes. problems. Yes. And the Christians don't understand that the greatest source of fixing anything is Jesus himself. They'd rather start with us than with Jesus. Because they see us, they don't see Jesus. And when you're weak in your faith, you want to talk to something you can see. But if my guys, if my top crew, if my 20% of most of my effective non-full-time <coughs> ministers are busy solving all the problems, my church will not grow. But if I could literally free up if I could free up that 20% of the church that literally they have three times the amount of time just to convert people and be hospitable. Wow. And by that, also set an example for the other 70% of the church that this is how we live. Wow. Yeah. And that Christians could actually go to Christ to fix their problems. Yes. The church could get unstuck. Right. Yeah. And we would stop talking about 20, 40, 60 growth and start talking about 200, 500, 1,000. Right. Yeah. The anything is possible. Right. Right. So somehow I have to retool myself in the way I interact with people that they don't turn to me, they turn to Christ. Yeah. And that's what this instrument, this tool is about, which I think is also good for me, that I can learn how to depend on Christ more for how I'm doing personally. Amen. And Christ is real. Yes. Amen. He's alive. Yes. <laughs> he's in us and he's yes. with us. Amen. And sometimes we just have to use our imagination a little bit, yeah. which our parents told us not to when we were kids. <laughs> you know, there is no monster in the closet. It's not there. If you can't see it, it's not there. But the Bible says the exact opposite. The most important things are things you cannot see. Right. And what you see really isn't that important. So we just have to flip this upside down and help the church to realize Jesus is the answer. I'm here to guide you in connecting with Jesus, but I'm not your Jesus. And I know all of us... Uh, some of us do better with that than others and, and you know there's times when I'm doing well with that and there's times when I'm not I like that people depend on me it makes me feel like I have a sense of worth but that's not good that's not good and sometimes I get so busy then I kind of snap and I start to actually do things probably properly like a brother calls me and he says I'm doing terrible in this and I said well and he said will you get with me and I said I'll get with you let's get together in three days but here's what I want you to do I want you to read your Bible Bible every day for these three days and pray about this and study this out and then let's meet in three days and he said okay I'll do it I called him two days later to confirm the appointment I said did you read the Bible every day did you say this? he said no I didn't and I said then I'm not meeting with you tomorrow 
And that's very unusual for my character, just so you know. <laughs> Um, but he's got to figure this out. I am not going to be able to fix this. Yeah. Come on, bro. So the next three days, he actually read his Bible every day. And, and we got together, and, and I helped him some. And then the next week, he was in a study. And, and the next week, you know, he wants to be a Bible talk leader. So he's okay. <laughs> but, but we've all had interactions like that. Yes. And, and sometimes we look at our top people and we think, why aren't you guys baptizing like you used to? And it's because they're, right. yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So this is a little bit about what we're going to try and talk about. Amen? If we don't change our direction, we are likely to end up where we are headed. I don't know how many years in a row I've said this now that we're about to, this is, this is the year. It's all going to happen. And you know, Kiev, uh, maybe, I think it was five years ago, we were 1,800. Uh, today we're 2,050. So we've grown about 250 in the last four years. Um, we bury about 40 to 50 people a year um, in our church. So actually, there's probably a little more growth than, the, than the, the world stat sheet shows up because we just seem to have a lot of people die. Um, the average lifespan in my country is about 58. So we lose people quicker than um, other countries. But overall, it's kind of growing, but it doesn't feel like we're hitting, hitting on all cylinders by any stretch of the imagination. I feel like there's so much potential in the church untapped. Um, so that's what this is about. Amen? Christ is the answer. I really believe Christ is the answer. Amen. It's easily, easy to get entangled. And what I've been describing this last five or ten minutes is just being entangled. Yeah. It's easy to get entangled. But if we fix our eyes on Christ, then we can get untangled. Right. Amen? Amen. What is it that amazes you about Christ? Let's just hear some thoughts. Shout it out, or not shout it out, but in a word or a sentence. <laughs> what is it that astounds you about Christ? Wisdom. Who can share? Okay, wisdom. No record of wrongs. No record of wrongs. Unchanging. 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 Faithful. Faithful. Humility. Humility. His compassion. His compassion. It's transforming. Dependent on God. Takes you where you're at. His boldness. Human. He's human. That was it. Uh -huh. His sovereignty. His sovereignty. Resurrection. His resurrection. So he can be both lion and lamb. Okay, lion and lamb. Just an incredible contrast. Uh huh. What? He's so patient. Servant. Such a servant. Being non-judgmental. Uh-huh. Not judgmental. So unflappable. Unflappable. Tell me later what that means. But I totally agree. <laughs> Beg no one. He knew how to have his boundaries. Uncompromising devotion to God. Uncompromising devotion. Yeah. Willing to be nothing. Um, always knew exactly what the need was. Always knew exactly what the need was. Uh huh. Last one. Integrity. His integrity. Okay. Amen. Incredible, right? Yeah. Jesus yeah. is incredible. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, he's just flat amazing. Yeah. Some of the verses that you guys have even quoted or, or mentioned, he's truth and grace. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Jesus is truth and grace. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting with, with all the crazy things going on in the country. The best question to, to figure out how we should respond is, how would Jesus respond right now? Right. Jesus is truth. Just even asking that question at times rings true. Um, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I've lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Every Christian can gain Christ. Mm -hmm. Every Christian can gain Christ. Amen. There's nothing in our lives that compares to just having Christ. Yeah. There's no diploma. There's no language that you've learned. There, there's nothing that can quite equip you for life like Christ. Right. Just Christ. Right. Right. Yeah. Philippians 1.20, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Christ is everything. Amen. Colossians 2.9-10, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Can you imagine? Wow, yeah, right. 
Are you serious? <laughs> and you've been given you. And I'm thinking about every single Christian in our church, not just yeah. thinking about us in this room. You've been given fullness in Christ. And he's the head over every power and authority. Could there really be a situation where someone's stuck if this is true? Right. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Great point. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that has worked within us. Immeasurably more. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We no longer exist. We died. Christ now lives in us. If we can just focus the Christians on Christ, if we could just focus on Christ, what is possible? We have to be Christ-focused. Metanoia. So thankful for Ed and his study on metanoia. We did it in Kiev a few years ago. It really helped us get the church turned back around. And uh, so thankful for that. And I want to suggest that we have a moment of metanoia. Look at Proverbs 29, 18. All right. Come on. Let's go. I feel like I'm in Donetsk. Yeah. <laughs> Although, praise God, it's peaceful hearing that. You know, Christ is the answer. Let's be convinced Christ is the answer. You are not the answer. That's true. Let me take that pressure off of you. I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm trying to set us free. All right. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 2019. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. When you have a vision, you're willing to restrain. I dreamed to be a professional tennis player. So I st stopped drinking. You don't consider smoking. You don't consider drugs. You get up at 6 in the morning when you'd rather sleep. You do all kinds of things. You, you put all kinds of restraints on you because you have a vision. Right. You want to be a doctor. If you want to achieve anything, whenever someone gets right. fired up about achieving something, they start to put restraints mm -hmm. so that they can reach their vision. Yeah, right. yeah. If a Christian does not have a clear vision, he will not restrain right. himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. But if I have a clear vision of what I want, I'll do almost anything to reach it if I really believe in it. Amen. You follow me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is the vision then? What is the vision that inspires people to want to restrain themselves? I put before you that the vision for the Christians should be to be like Christ. Yeah. That I'm actually willing to deny myself to be more like Jesus. Amen. Sometimes heaven motivates us. Sometimes being fruitful motivates us. Sometimes getting an opportunity motivates us. Sometimes that can motivate us on a kind of a short-term thing. But, you know, as we all know, we're all kind of different. Something motivates one person, and the other person doesn't get too fired up about that. And, and, and you're, you're totally on fire about what fires you up because it really does fire you up. But that doesn't mean it's going to fire up the next guy. But Christ <coughs> fires up everybody. That's right. Great point. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can latch on to a dream in Christ that's worth even restraining yourself. If Jesus is the goal. Colossians 3.1 Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. Another one. No one can lay any foundation other than the one that's already laid in Christ Jesus. I have something to say about this verse, actually. One second. Wait, You know, the foundation of everything we do is Christ. 
we can't lay a different, we can't put in a substitute idea. Right. Right. You, you can't lay a different foundation than Christ. Christ is what motivated everybody in the beginning. And sometimes we can get on a tangent of let's, let's go this direction. But the direction is Christ. Um, the Church of Christ is the most unprecedented organization of all time. There's never been an organization as powerful as the Church of Christ. Ever. And the church said amen. Come on. Amen. 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 This is the Church of Christ. We're waiting. Think about it. Think about it. From the beginning of time till today, there's never been anything like the Church of Christ. Ever. Something so powerful, something that can literally change the course of eternity, that could change culture, that's unchangeable by the gates of hell. It's, it's unprecedented. The Church of Christ, so much power, and the foundation is the Word of God. It's Christ. Right. It's the cornerstone. Right. Yeah. Part three. All right. So come Christ on. is the answer. I want us to be convinced of that, and we'll come back to to helping Christians get focused on Christ. But I want to talk about the disciple one second because I've sinned in this area for sure. I don't view the disciple the way the Bible does. I don't respect the disciple of Christ like the Bible does and like I believe God does. I think I, I can sometimes even look down on a member, someone who's carrying the Holy Spirit of God, and I can look down on them thinking, what's wrong with this person? And, and I think I need to repent. No, I'm sure I need to repent. <laughs> that I need to really understand what, what is that? Amen. Because if I don't view them the way God views them, That's I right. won't expect from them what God expects from them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. What do we know about the disciple? Think of the verses that talk about disciples. Who are they really? Uh, some I just picked out, and I know there's more, so you can, you can do your own thing here, your own study. Ephesians 1 4, chosen by God. Do you realize every Christian in your church was handpicked by God? Come on. Really? I mean, the creator of the universe knows what he's doing, right? Sure. What sports teams are in this area? No. Help me out. There's no. none. None. They don't have any. Baltimore Ravens. No. Yeah. Washington Redskins. <laughs> How do you get on a sports team? How do you get on the, the World Cup team? The United States World Cup soccer, that's a big thing in our part of the world. How do you get on that team? What if you know Obama? Does that get you on the team? No. What if you know some, what if you pay a lot of money? Could Bill Gates get on the team if he wanted to? The only way you get on that team is if you're the best. Right. Sure, that's right. Now, obviously, you pick the best because the, the winning the trophy is important. That's right. God has a task to win the world. God so much wants these seven billion people to have a chance to know about His love, so He picked a team. Do you want to try and tell me he randomly picked a team? Do you want to try and tell me he didn't equip the team to win? Really? If we had to pick a team here to play against the Boston Church, whatever, baseball, football, we'd, we'd find out who plays. And, and we'd put together the best team we could possibly get. And it doesn't matter if you're my buddy or you're my right-hand minister or whatever. If you don't play, you're not on, you're not on the team. Because <laughs> we got to win. Do you think God feels less about the salvation of this world? Do you think he didn't put the perfect team together? That obviously is going to need his power, but it's the team. Right? 
great. Chosen by God. Everyone, wow. every member of our church is chosen. He's a child of God. Yeah. I mean, if you meet the son of somebody you really respect, you you, you just kind of pass that respect on to the kid. Not even because he deserves it, it's just it's, it's his kid. That's right. Yeah. Right? That's right. Yeah. My dad owned a pharmacy in, in, in a, like a Walgreens or something in Kansas City when I grew up, and I could walk in and take a piece of candy, and everyone kind of respected me. <laughs> I didn't even pay for it. Why? Well, because my dad kind of, he owns a place. <laughs> God owns the place. Yeah. Yeah. These, right. these are his kids, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. You're Come a part on. of the body. No one part can say to the other part, I don't really need you. Come on. Come on. Right? Yeah. Every part, invaluable. Yeah. Every part worthy of the blood of Christ. Whoa. The crucifixion of the Son of God is worthy of everybody. Carrying the Holy Spirit, the Holy of Holies. Yeah. It's in us. It's in our members. Mm -hmm. right. About that. All the power. Second Peter one three. What is it? Can someone read that for me real quick? Second Peter one three. Uh huh. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. What a great verse! Yeah. Yeah. By our knowledge of, by our focus on Christ, all the power is made available. Wow. Dang. <laughs> shielded by God's power. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5, that we're shielded by God's power. 2 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ. Wow. Amen. And we've all experienced that. There's times when you can put on your head, okay, what would Jesus do? Yeah. When you really start thinking about Jesus, you know exactly what he's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't need a degree to know exactly what he's thinking. Yeah. And it's clear as day. Yeah. Uh -huh. As soon as you don't focus on what you think, or what that brother told you, or what that sister did, or whatever. As soon as you think, what is Jesus thinking about this? Yeah. It's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. We have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. A disciple can grow in everything. Speaking of love, in all things, grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. Every disciple can grow. First Thessalonians 2.13, and we also, at, also thank God continually, because when you receive the word of God, what you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Can you imagine? The word of God is at work at you even when you're not even thinking about the word of God. Come on. It's always at work in us. Amen. Amen. The scriptures are working in the hearts of the Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to them, to them who are the, those called according to his purpose. Even when we have tragic things happening, God's still working. Come on. Wow. Come on. Unbelievable. So even your lowest point as a disciple, God's still using it. Yeah. The funny thing is, most of my most impacting things in my life that I share about are my worst moments. So in Christ, your victories are awesome, but even your worst moments turn into victories. You can do no wrong. Even when you blow it, it turns into a blessing. Where else does that happen? Wow, come on. This is true. Where else does that happen? Come on. The amazing disciple. The amazing disciple. Disciples are amazing. They're all completely unique. They have their own universe of ideas, unique experiences, memories, life situations, reactive choices, genetic blueprint. He has it all. Disciples have all the resources he needs in God. Priorities to get him unstuck. True change, the natural process of the work of the Spirit, 2 Peter 1 3, is divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Even if you messed up 77 times wow. a day, oh, yeah. goodness, I so undervalue and under acknowledge the power of the disciple, what God's put into him, unbelievable. 
You know, sometimes you look at that story in the Acts, right? When the persecution hit and they all scattered and churches were started all over the world, I thought, if you scatter my church right now, I may never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad commentary. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Sad commentary Come on, on my on, faith and a lack of recognition of what God can do in the disciples. And the saddest thing is that they'll go away thinking what I think about them. Because although I've never said that out loud, that's what I demonstrate with every sermon, the way I talk to people, the way I teach people, the way I act around people. It's just all wrong. But it can all get turned upside down. Let them connect to Jesus. Because obviously when they were scattered all over the place and they preached everywhere they went, they were connected to Jesus. They were not connected to Peter, clearly. They didn't have Peter's words in their head, probably. They had Jesus's in their head. Amen? Amen. So walk with the Spirit, right? Each disciple has their own path with God. The Spirit is leading the disciples. You know, it's interesting. You don't always know what God's doing, right? Right. Right, right, right? Have you ever had moments in your Christian life where you thought, this is terrible, but it turned out to be awesome? Yeah. 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 My whole life is that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. me and my wife, we started dating. Three months later, we were engaged. And then two months later, uh, a month up from my wedding, we broke off our engagement. Uh, because uh, a brother and sister came over from the state, saw our dynamic, and felt like this isn't good. I didn't understand it at the time. I thought this is really bad. At the time, it didn't feel right. Later on, it became very clear why God did that. It probably saved our marriage. Right? Getting kicked out of the Ukraine was the biggest disaster that had ever happened to me. I couldn't believe this happened to me. But if I didn't get kicked out, I wouldn't have gone to Moscow. We wouldn't have done hope. We wouldn't have been with the Flemings. I'd be a totally different person today. I just didn't know what God was doing. We all have these stories. We all understand that. We don't always know what God is doing. Even more so, as a disciple, there's no way I could understand what God is doing in your life. But yet, I've sometimes so confidently affirmed, this is what you've done, this is what you need to do, and this is what God's going to do. Wow. That's going back to the point before, the amazing disciple. I'm thinking I'm a little too amazing, probably. I have to connect him with what God can do in his life. God's grace is working in the life all the time. Philippians 1, 6, being confident that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I need to play the right role in disciples' lives. I'm part of the problem. Part of the problem is they're not connecting to Jesus enough, but part of the problem is I'm playing a role that doesn't enable them to connect with Christ the way they need to be. The first question is, do I really believe that? I'm working on it. We often believe that we're the only ones who can fix it. That ministry's not doing well? Okay, I'll go go lead that ministry for a while. I'll get it turned around, then I'll come back over here, and I'll get that, and I'll do that. that Okay, I'll give it that married couple then. Okay, and I'll do that, and I'll do that. It it never ends. It never ends. And I do think there's, there's places where we need to plug in, absolutely. I'm not dismissing all that. I'm just saying that we have to believe Christ can have a bigger impact right. on our church. Good point. Thus leading to minister burnout. What's our role? To help the disciples get on track in regard to the formation process that's already in place. You think when God converted us, he didn't have a plan to mature us? I just need to get the people back on the plan that God has for them. Right. Have you ever had people come to you and feel guilty that they don't want to work for the church? Does that ever happen? Like, well, I guess I'm not as devoted because I just, you know. That's a weird thing. It's not everyone's role to work full time for the church. Right? Help the disciples to get on track in regard to the formation process that already place. Have faith in God's intention and to be in agreement with him. Okay, let's, let's go to the next part here. All right. How are we feeling about that last piece? The disciples are amazing. Now, I was a tennis player, 
I had a coach who didn't believe in me very much and I didn't accomplish much. Then I had a coach who thought I was a lot better than I really was. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I grew with him more than I've ever grown. And if you realize somebody could rip open their shirt and there'd be a big S here, if you see a hundred kilogram something that has to be moved or 2,000 pounds something that needs to move, you, you do. Get busy, you can do that. Yeah. I saw the S. Yeah. I know what's inside you. Yeah. You can totally do that. Right. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. You can do it. Let me show you how it's done and let me watch you how you do it, but this can be done. Right. Yeah. Come on. All right. Yeah. It's in you. Yes. God put it in you. Yeah. Sit down. Find me five verses that, that prove my point. Find me five verses right now that prove my point that you could do anything with Christ. I can't do that. Okay, I'll find five verses. That, I'll find five verses that tell you you're wrong right now that you could do anything with Christ. Sometimes it's just easier to be stuck. Just a lot easier to be stuck. Okay. Christ focus. So if we're going to focus on Christ, that means we can't focus on the problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Come on. Let's talk about this a second. But just just stretch your legs. I'm afraid to do another fellowship break. I won't see you until after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could just literally stand up and hug a couple people, I think yeah. keep the blood and the love in the room, okay? <laughs> You're like easiest. Okay, let's be seated. You have one job. One job.